Hello, welcome to my warehouse. My name is Dustin. I operate my full-time reselling business here out of my home, and today we're going to be taking a quick tour with you. So if you want to come on in, we'll get started showing you around. What is up guys, welcome back into another episode of MPTV Cribs where we tour other resellers warehouses and their inventory systems. Today we are going to be letting Dustin take us on his tour of his house where he runs his entire business out of. So without further ado, I'll let him take it away. All right, so we're actually gonna go ahead and start back in the office. That's where kind of everything starts and begins for all the items where we list, take photos, ship, all of that good stuff. I do operate out of my three bedroom house and we utilize two of those bedrooms and the garage for the majority of all the inventory and all the operations. So we're gonna start back there, got some inventory that just came in. We'll take it back there and show you guys just what that process looks like. So we operate out of a 10 by 12 room. This is room one of the two that we utilize here in the home. And as you can see, we cram everything in here. When you're operating out of your house, you have to utilize every bit of space you can. So on the left-hand side here, we've got some new inventory that we just got in the Burlington bag. Um, and what we do with any new inventory, for the most part, as soon as we get it in, we will sort it into our needs listing uh, area. Both of these tall metal racks are used for just items that need to be listed or an in incoming inventory. So for the instance, these items here, we probably sort out, uh, for instance, we'll put, you know, that particular item, electronics, whatever it is in there. Uh, if we've got shoes, I'll either put them in totes to keep them organized, again, just to try to make listing a little easier, or we'll put them in these green or blue bags, however we need to do it. But I do this just so whenever I go to actually list items, I can just grab the tote and it's all gonna be similar items and it makes my listing day a lot easier for me. Um, so we organize our items, we got new items in here, we'll organize them in there. These They will stay stored in here until we're actually ready to list. At that point, we'll pull them out on the table and get started on the listing portion. This metal rack is actually listed stuff. We move it around the house a lot, uh, but this just has multi-skew items that I need easy access to, and I don't want to tote those up yet just because they're kind of a pain to dig through. But they sell really fast right now, so we've got them out and kind of just easy access. Um, we utilize totes all over the place. This is actually inventory that I've been working on listing today, um, and then some inventory that needs listed back behind it. We utilize this corner for processing everything. We got these tables here, so we'll lay out the inventory when it comes in to get it sorted, or we'll package orders. As you can see, we've got some orders ready to go right there. We utilize it for anything that we can, but for the most part, this is where everything gets laid out and it's kind of the workstation of the of the house. We've got easy access to all the shipping supplies. Uh, we've got easy access to like the bubble mailers and all that. I use these shoe racks from Amazon. They work great for light stuff, so you can store them all and keep them all organized. It looks a bit out of chaos right now, but it is easy to grab whatever you need when you're shipping. Again, space saving is key, so we've got all kinds of stuff underneath of here for packing supplies, extra poly mailers, all that stuff is under here, these bubble, uh, air bubble pockets and stuff like that. Just trying to get as much space filled as you can because you're going to need it. We'll also utilize these tables for taking photos if we need to, and it works great. We also do have a pop-up light box that we can set up here if we need that for uh, some of the smaller items and so on. Shipping corner is kind of this section. We've got our office sort of space over here, computer where we do our listing, shipping, all that printer and scale over here on the left side as you can see i've got product that i'm working on right now on the corner there just again using every bit of space that we can uh this corner or closet over here we utilize for all of our boxes so this is all different sizes of boxes that we use for shipping and then again when you have limited space you find whatever storage you can we've got some unlisted hats here on the back which is where i would put those new hats in we'll just throw them in here and then when we get to listing we can do it Space that you're not gonna use for anything else, so you might as well find a way to use it for something. Before we jump into the inventory rooms, I wanna show you guys how we categorize our inventory. We've kinda of got three categories here, and we inventory each of these a little bit different just because of the system that we have to use with the space that we have. So for instance here, we have one smaller item. Uh, any item that is this small or that is going to be, it can be bigger than this, but that'll fit in a tote, we actually put these in a tote system and we'll show you that. We don't have to do anything else with this item. Um, once it's listed, we take it and throw it in the tote and label it with that tote and we'll show you that once we get to that room. The second item is a bulk item. Now these will go out to our garage storage area. These will get put on a shelf and the SKU system or the SKU label will just be which shelving unit that is and which 
shelf on that unit it is. And it's a pretty simple process. Again, we'll, we'll show examples of these out once we get to the garage. The third item is a little bit different, and this is because it's kind of unique to me, but I do a lot of reselling for shoes that come without boxes, original boxes. So for instance, these shoes we picked up at Ross. A lot of people do like to store them on kind of these these shelving units or the shoe racks that you can get on Amazon and that works great but there's a couple reasons that I do it a little bit different number one I don't want to have to search for this exact shoe skew and size and all that because I do get a lot of the same shoes just in different sizes so the system that I've come up with is pretty simple basically once this item is listed I will actually store them in these free priority mail shoe boxes so I'll take these items I will drop them into this shoe box and then every single shoe that I have, for instance, this size and this style and everything will get its own number. So each shoe or pair of shoes that I have has a unique SKU number. Of course, it's upside down right now. So when this item comes in and I see the SKU number as 089, I know that all I have to do is go find this box. And we'll show you how we operate that in the garage once we get there. But I just want to show you exactly how we label it and get it started. As soon as it's listed, it goes into one of these boxes. It gets a unique number and then we take it out to the storage. So let's Let's go ahead and grab these items, take them to both of those rooms, and I'll show you guys how our setup is in there. All right, so moving on to our second room here. This is our inventory room number one. This is just a 10 by 12 bedroom that we utilize here in the house. And this is for all of our small inventory to medium sized stuff that will fit in totes easily. For instance, our Pelican case here. So once we have the item saved in our drafts ready to be listed, we'll bring the item in here, find any of these totes that it'll fit in. We really don't have it categorized. Um, for the most part, it's just find a coat that it fits in, dump it in, and then we will label that item with whatever the tote number is. Every tote in here has its own number, and so on the SKU field, we would just put T5 for tote 5. So when that item sells, all we have to do is locate whichever tote number it's in, pull that tote out, open it up, grab the item, and we're ready to ship. This has worked really well for me so far. We're just utilizing these eight, nine dollar totes from Walmart. These have the flip top lids, but you can use any of them that you want. Um, but it works really well. I've used this system for a while now, and it's probably the best thing that I put into place when starting. Uh, I started with about 500 SKUs. By the time I got to that point, I had to get an inventory system, and this worked great. You can use boxes, other totes, whatever you want to do, but just having a unique spot for every item, whether it's on shelving or anything like that, really makes it nice. We do have some bulk storage in the corners. So over here in the corner, we just have stuff that I don't want out in my garage, maybe due to heat or anything like that, depending on the time of the year. This is all just K-Cups uh, coffee that I have a source from on that. So we have those in the corner here and we utilize every little piece of space that we can. For instance, this corner here we can't get to because of the totes, but we have our protein powder that we stack in bulk in there and just grab off the top as we go. So we try to find as much area for extra space that we can. Again, with the tote rack or the tote hat racks, whatever you want to call it here, hat racks, that's what we're looking for on the back with the doors, just utilizing that space as best we can. So for the smaller items, they all go in here. One quick detour here, this is actually in my living room. Obviously space is everything and unfortunately we were run out. So right now we actually have our hat tote system in here. I've ended up with a bulk purchase of over a thousand hats. We ended up having to purchase some of these uh, totes. These are purchased off of Amazon. They're a little bit expensive. I think they're like 10 or $15 each but they're zipper enclosure, they've got some rigid sides to them, they fit about 50 hats in each tote, and we label them just like we do other totes. So we have the shoe totes and the regular totes, these are just HT totes, hat totes, um, and they're all labeled to each individual one. Whenever a sale comes in, for instance, we got a sale today for one of the totes in hat tote one, we just pull it out, grab the hat, and we're good to go. Um, it's really nice, it keeps them nice and clean, which is key for hats and other items as well. If you can't put them in a tote, you don't want them getting dusty and dirty and stuff like that. So it keeps them nice and clean, you can still see what's in them, and they also stack pretty well. So if you have a bulk amount like I do, uh, it just makes it a lot easier and protects them just a little bit more. So our second area of storage is the garage. Now this is gonna be for any of those items, for instance, the item that wouldn't really fit in a tote or would fit in a tote, but would take up most of the tote, and our larger shoe selection and all that go out here in the garage. So we have these shelving units set up and basically have each unit a particular number. This is unit one just because it's on the end here. And then every shelf on this unit from top to bottom has its own number. 
For instance, this is unit one, shelf one, shelf two, shelf three, so on and so forth. So when we have these larger items, for instance, the Milwaukee item, we would find an empty spot on one of our shelves, throw it on there, we're using this as an example. We'll throw it on there and then we'll put in the SKU system or in our SKU label, whether it's on eBay or however we are doing it, we would put unit one, shelf two, and that will tell us exactly what shelf it is on. Makes it really easy uh, for finding items, again, uh, for the most part, and it's all gonna be larger items. We wouldn't really wanna put some of these items that would take up an entire tote, it's just a waste of space. So this works out real well and we can have access to all of it fairly easily. Same system for my inbox shoes, I apologize, it's a little dark down there, but these are all just brand new inbox shoes that I have stored in here. Same exact system, this is shelving unit number two, this is shelf one, so unit two, shelf one, has all my Nike slides, or those particular SKU numbers for those slides, and so if we were to find this item on my eBay store right now, in the SKU field, it would say unit two, shelf two, and that would be the location for that particular type of shoe. That's what we utilize on this side. Now for all of those shoes that we have out of box, like I said, that's become a big part of my sourcing here recently. We would take this item, we already have it labeled with that particular number, we would find the empty spot for it. So every single one of these boxes is a unique numbered shoe or unique numbered box. For instance, number 19 there, number 37 here. It's in order from top to bottom, it goes down and we've got it on both sides here. We would just find the spot for that shoe. So for instance, this one, technically isn't the last shoe that I listed, or this box number isn't. I've actually got about 200 of these boxes right now. But what this allows me to do is, for instance, this shoe already sold uh, a couple days ago, but I reutilize that box or rewrite the number on a new box so that I can throw it right back in the same spot that it came from. So for instance, this one right here is gonna go right back there. It reuses all the space. You don't have to go through and condense all your inventory, move it down and so on and so forth when you just reuse those numbers as soon as one sells, you rewrite it on a new box and put your newly listed shoes on there. So that's how we have these set up here. We don't utilize the you know unit one, unit two thing on these just because it's not needed. This is just by number and makes it so easy and so nice. It's been probably the best way that I've come up with to store these items. Uh, it does take a little bit more space than probably would if you had some of those other cheaper shoe racks, but this time it saves me by literally just coming out here. I love selling these shoes. I can grab this box so quick. It's even faster than my SKU system uh, for like your inbox ones like these ones here. So just a super nice and has been a huge help for keeping my inventory. My name is Dustin, also known as the Delco Reseller. I've been a full-time reseller now for just about a year, a few days under that. I've been part-time for about 15 years. I got my start in reselling back in grade school. I flipped a unreleased Nerf gun that I found on a Walmart shelf uh, from $30, flipped it on eBay in a one-day auction to about $180. And needless to say, that kind of gets you hooked pretty much right away. So <laughs> that's kind of how I got my start. Uh, through school, up until high school, I did on and off reselling. I uh, did Nerf guns for a long time, reselling those, brand new ones that would come out, would walk out of Target or Walmart or uh, Toys R Us with shopping cart loads of Nerf guns, uh, get some pretty funny looks, but made a really good business of it, I guess you could say, just a side hustle selling those, found a niche in the market selling those internationally, and that's kind of the first experience I had with actually kind of operating as a business, not really a business, but as a solid side hustle to where that's all I did to make money through up and through high school. Out of high school, I started a part-time job at a retail store, uh, just being a cashier, and then worked my way up through there into, at the end of it, an assistant store manager position with that company, and then also had an assistant store manager position, as well as store manager positions with, a couple, with another company as well, uh, up until about a year ago when I went to full-time. During those areas there where I was kind of working my way up into retail, I had a couple of side hustles that were more of a business. The first one was working for a gentleman who operated a full eBay, Amazon, and uh, his own website selling rock and roll memorabilia and collectibles. He was purchasing wholesale items, buying from the manufacturers and selling those. Uh, had a very successful business and I got to work with him for about a year and a half. Really taught me a ton about operating an online business. It just really, really grew kind of that knowledge and that want to do something on my own. At that point, seeing him being able to work for himself and had been doing it for many years doing it. So kind of gave me a taste of what that was like during that time and taught me so much. And I really appreciate what what all he instilled in me and was able to share with me during that time. I left that job when I got offered a full-time salary position. 
obviously when you go salary you go from you know 30 hour work weeks to 50 hour work weeks if you're lucky uh, sometimes even up to 60 and during the holidays it's ridiculous but I got offered that job so I wasn't able to continue working with him and kind of left that as it was kind of put reselling on the back burner a couple years after that I got an opportunity to purchase some Amazon liquidation directly from Amazon at the time this was back in 2015 liquidation was a whole nother game during then that was an eye-opener to see another source of revenue besides just the retail arbitrage market or the you know buying from manufacturers this was another kind of a third option and it really expanded my horizons with that me and a buddy of mine went in together and did that for a few months but again we were both working salary and we just couldn't keep up with the sorting the pallets and going through everything and listing and all that it's just a lot of work so we kind of had to let that one go uh, but it was just, again, another experience that I got to experience to kind of see, you know, what options were out there. That leads up to about two years ago, just doing it on and off, never really taking it serious. Up until about two years ago, they opened up bin stores here in the local area and started sourcing from them. Realized that they had a lot of the same stuff that I used to buy, buy the pallets. So being able to source through them, though, I got to pick what I wanted instead of having to buy the whole thing. And so I began sourcing in that. At that point, I realized this could be an actual business and I wanted to kind of see if it was an opportunity for me or not. So I started again, a side hustle with it, but I set it up as a business at that point with LLC, all that stuff, getting it all set up correctly, all the banks and everything separate. So I could actually see if I was going to be making enough money to take it to a full-time position if I wanted to later on down the road. We started that in April, March, end of our March, beginning of April of last year. And that's when I finally just said, okay, from here on, let's track everything and make sure what we're actually making and see if it's a solution. Uh, by the beginning of August, we were already netting the same amount as what I was taking home from my salary position. And at that point, it came down to being a decision of, do you stick with your current career path or do you try this new one out? And that's a scary decision to make and a scary one to consider. But I think we made the right choice. We decided at that point to go ahead and put our notice in and switch over to doing this full time and give it a shot. Uh, like I said, been doing it a long time on the side, but to finally give it that opportunity to be something bigger. So as of August of last year, I quit my full time job and went completely full time reselling. And so far I haven't really regretted it at all. Uh, it's, it's nerve wracking, it's stressful, but if you enjoy the reselling portion of it, it, it makes every day a fun day at work. So that's kind of where we're at with it. Uh, last year, we grossed from April through December, we grossed 105,000 in sales between our two platforms, eBay and Amazon FBM. This year alone, we're still just eBay and Amazon FBM, uh, but we've already met that goal of 105,000 and we're above that now. And we're on track to actually do about 200 to 250,000 for the year. Right now, I currently source, uh, like I said, I started with liquidation. And I did liquidation. I still do liquidation as far as purchasing uh, from either bin stores or actually directly buying, you know, full pallets or whatever it is. I got some connections with those bin stores and was actually able to make some pretty big bulk buys from them on stuff they weren't being able to move very quickly. So they would offer it to me at a better price and I would turn around and flip that. Did really well with that. I uh, don't have those connections now just because of the liquidation market. It just, it's so volatile and changes. So once I wasn't being able to get those bulk buys and some of those bigger buys, I had to look at other avenues of sourcing. I like the retail arbitrage idea, so I kind of dug into that. That's kind of what led me into Adam's channel here and realized, you know, that, hey, there's still that market. There's still what I used to do with Nerf guns I could do in different categories and so on. So about four months ago, I want to say four or five months ago, I switched over to doing retail and online arbitrage for a good chunk of my sourcing. And as of right now, I'd say it's about 75% of my sourcing. That's just due to liquidation's kind of status. I still want to continue with liquidation. It's very profitable um, if you do it the correct way. And so I want to continue with that. But as of right now, the market is just crazy. Everybody's buying it up. So it's super high cost and it's just not that easy and that much money to be made there. So I'm kind of holding off on it, but I do imagine we'll get back into that uh, once the market comes back down on the liquidation and the truckloads and all that. So we have kind of geared and changed our focus to the retail arbitrage and online arbitrage. As far as scaling goes on the business, uh, we're definitely still scaling. Now, as you can see, I'm maxing out my, my storage facility right now. So our goal for scaling, and I kind of led onto this, is we are actually just now this week starting into the FBA portion of Amazon, which is fulfilled by Amazon. 
And basically that solves two issues. Number one, it allows us to move higher quantity of items. It may not be as good of a profit margin, but when you can bulk sell, you know, 20 items instead of just selling one or two, uh, that's a huge advantage. The second advantage is obviously we don't have to store the stuff here. We can ship it into Amazon and store it there. And that's kind of where we're at in scaling at the moment. We plan on scaling that up through probably next year. And then next year things will change. We'll actually have to relocate and kind of do something else, but that'll be probably in another state. So I don't want to go out and purchase anything here or set up storage units if I don't have to, just because I do plan on relocating this business just due to family things and so on kind of outside of the business. But I feel like FBA is going to give us that opportunity to continue to scale, continue to raise those profits. Like I said, we're shooting for 250000 this year. I would like to double that next year. And I think as long as we can get everything set up correctly going into fourth quarter this year, get a good solid process down, I think it won't be any issue next year to hit that pro hopefully four hundred to 500000 which is going to be our goal. Unless the FBM takes off and we'll see how that goes. So... Uh, super excited to expand. I, I'm one of those people. I'm always a go-getter. I want to go and ex continue on. It was the same way in my retail career. I wanted to get that next promotion and so on. And when you run your own business, you have full control over that. So it's super nice. It's super nerve wracking and it's, you know, stressful. It may not be for everybody, but it is definitely something that I'm striving for and I can't wait to see where it goes. Thank you guys for coming along on this tour with me. Hopefully I was able to share some stuff that could be helpful for you and your inventory solutions. Uh, this series has already helped me out a lot and I've got a lot of ideas that I want to implement and hopefully I was able to share a few for you guys as well. So if you have any questions, feel free to check out my YouTube channel down below, Delco Resells. There'll be a link in the description. It's a brand new channel, so I don't have much up there, if anything, at the moment, um, but we'll be posting up some videos and stuff there. But you're welcome to shoot me a message as well and feel free to let me know or leave in the comment box below and I'll try to keep an eye out on this for a little while also. I believe we'll be doing a podcast on the All About Profit podcast, so uh, stay tuned for that as well. We'll answer as many questions as we can then. But other than that, I think that's it. I've got to get back to listing. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.